Hello everybody and welcome back to another great Monster Hobbies model car build video. Today we're going to be looking at another one of my dad's model kit builds and this time around it is the Thomas Flyer from AMT. Now I happen to have one in here that's kind of dismantled. I picked it up a long time ago as a second-hand model from a model car show but uh, I do have the box and it's always interesting. Now in case you didn't know the Thomas Flyer was built in 1908 for the New York to Paris road race and the cool thing about the box is it shows the model from the side and points out everything on it and on this side it also has all the information about that New York to Paris road race and here you can see the map for the road race and as you can tell it goes quite a long ways it goes from New York all the way back and then up through Japan and drops down in Russia and goes all the way to Paris so that's really amazing considering the style of cars that were running on this and everything else. And what makes the Thomas Flyer significant is it was an American Bay built car and it was the only one that actually finished the race. There was other cars from France and Germany and I do believe Spain as well. But all of them died somewhere along the way. Probably a lot of them died up going into Alaska <laughs> so, and across Russia. So again, in the colder climates. But the Thomas Flyer did make it through. So my dad's actually built this as two different versions. So in our first video, we're going to take a look at the way he built it right out of the box. And in the second video, we're going to take a look at a very special race car version. So I'm just going to leave this opening for both videos. So now let's go to, down to the bench and see the model that we're going to display this week. Here we have my dad's build of the 1908 Thomas Flyer. And this was built back in the late 70s, maybe early 80s. And this is also done in the original model builder style where the model was molded in this light gray plastic, as you can see here. And my dad just painted the parts that were white and wood and red using a tester's paints and a paintbrush. Now, as we rotate this around, you can see the wonderful brass work that came in with the model kit. There's the wooden fenders with the fabric fender wells and then the shawmut on the boxes. Now this model is really, really clean, so this would be basically before the race even began, when it was at the starting lineup. So you can see the little trunks up here in the seats. There's the extra spare tires for blowouts, the little hooks that hold them in place. Then a wonderful New York to Paris on the gas tank. The wheels, now these actually rotate around this way, but the hubs stay stationary. Here's a little bit for oiling that chain in the back. This was a chain-driven car, of course. There's your horn and the different gear levers and your spark advance up on the steering wheel. There are some gauges in there as well as the floor pedal. All the different water tanks and boxes that you needed to keep the car going. The hood is removable and there is a strap across the hood. That was to help keep the vibration and noise down. And again, really nice. You got the hang hand crank up front. And again, just a wonderful all around built kit. This was made out of, uh, I think, sheet metal on a wooden frame. And that's where it was all nailed in place. And again, a really wonderful car with a great, awesome history. This is one of the model kits that I do wish that AMT would re-release because you can easily turn it into a truck or something back here if you just keep all this front the same. So I can take the hood up and off. This is the T-style engine block. So that would mean there's a valve on either side of the cylinder head and the cylinder is up in the center. Here we have a wonderful illustration from the 1926 Dykes Automobile Encyclopedia. And here it shows how the T engine worked with the updraft carburetor as well. So what we have here is the fuel tank and then our fuel line going into the float on the carburetor. And then the carburetor, the gas comes across here. There's a gasoline screw for adjustments. And then it gets into the air intake, which splits the gas in air fuel mixture into the cylinder head. Now here we have the exhaust or the intake valve, pardon me, and there's a spark plug right on top. And this is what I'm talking about with the T style cylinder head. So the valve would drop down, let the gas in. The gas goes into the top of the cylinder head. And then as you can see, the sparks way over here. 
So in the spark part of the uh, movement of the engine, the spark would hit here and shoot the flame right across the top. And then here we have our exhaust valve, and these are all on gears for the gear down here as well, and a cam shaft down the middle. And then once the exhaust comes out, it will go into the muffler and out of the car. Here we have the undercarriage of the Thomas Flyer, and there is our engine with the oil pan and our crank going through into the crankshaft. Here's our clutch slash flywheel, and then we've got our transmission here. There might even be a transmission brake right in there. And uh, then we've got our rear transfer case, which again is going off to the chain drives. And on this side you can see a bunch of the different oilings and other items that are all made up for that chain drive in there. Again, the grey plastic is actually unpainted, which is kind of a shame that Dad didn't paint that with grey paint. Here we've got our running boards, and again into the holes, so you never did paint any of the uh, matching brown just to hide those. But overall, I mean, it's a nice clean build. You can see the fender aprons in here as well. And uh, really well done by my dad. Now one thing you will note in here is there's a bit of a gap on the hood here. And if I actually rotate the camera around, you can see the other gap there. And my dad always said that the frame on this Thomas Flyer was just a little bit crooked. So he did the best that he could in order to straighten it up. So here I've removed the head and you can see the engine right there. This is a T-head engine, which means there's a valve on either side of the engine block. And then uh, the cylinder is in the dead center. So that forms a T-shape in the cylinder head. Now here's the opposite side of the engine. And one thing about this motor is it would also have an updraft carburetor, which means that the carburetor is sitting down low on the engine and the air comes in through the bottom and gets sucked up into the cylinder heads. Well, I really hope you enjoyed that look at my dad's Thomas Flyer model kits. And if you would like to see the current model kits that we have for sale at www.monster-hobbies.ca, don't be afraid to click on the little link that'll be coming up somewhere down here at the end of the video, and it'll take you magically right to our model car page. Won't that be awesome? Don't have to dig around, you'll be transported directly there. There. So if you enjoy these videos, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. And if you want to help support our work, click that join button that's down below. And for $3 a month, you can help us out with all the great videos. Maybe even help us get a proper lighting down here in the basement so that you can see us in full color and without the shadows and glare. So until next time, everybody, keep building those models, share on our Facebook page, and happy model building.